This is how long it just took me to plan an entire two-week development project, complete with epics, user stories, dependencies, and realistic timelines. Just some time ago, this same breakdown would have taken me four hours and three team meetings, but I built something that changed everything. An AI agent that thinks like a senior project manager, plans like an agile expert, and executes faster than any human ever could. In the next few moments, I'll show you exactly how to build the system yourself using NHN and a simple prompt that turns chaos into reality. So are you ready to never manually plan a project again? If you're new here, my name is Shub and I build AI and automations to help businesses and professionals save time and money. If you're interested in grabbing this template, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to share it with you. And with that, Let's go ahead and see how this works. So I went ahead and told it that I want to build a website for my AI agency. And the agent came back to me with some initial discovery questions to get a better idea of what exactly I want to build. So things like what the focus and services are, what the target audience is, what my website goals are, the team and the timeline available, technical preferences, content and features. And once I provide all of these answers, it's gonna provide me a project overview and an epic by epic breakdown with detailed tasks. Let me go ahead and paste in some answers that I have ready. And let's see how this works its magic. So it's using the Anthropic chat model. It's using uh, its thinking. And it also went ahead and created a project in Asana. Once it makes the project, it's going to come back to me saying the project has been created. And then it's going to create each epic one after another. So here's the project summary. And these breakdowns are a key part of agile development. So it's asking me if I'm ready to proceed with Epic One Strategy and Content Foundation. I'm just gonna say yes. And it's gonna, it's gonna go ahead, find that project that it created earlier. It's gonna find users from Asana because it needs to figure out who to assign to. And then it's going to start creating tasks and subtasks in Asana. So if I go ahead and open up Asana, we'll see that we have the project created. We also have the strategy and content foundation, the first, uh, f the, the first epic created. If I expand this, it's going to start adding more tasks as the AI agent does its magic. It's also assigning the task to a relevant user, and it's also assigning a due date because I've given it a two-week timeline for this to complete. So the AI agent is doing its magic. It's created five subtasks already, and now it has confirmed that epic one is complete giving me an overview of what I'm doing. Uh, and then it's asking me if I'm ready for Epic 2. Let me go ahead and hit yes. I'm gonna fast forward creating all of the epics on screen and I'll show you what the final project looks like. It looks like in Asana. And there it is, the entire strategy for building out this automation agency website in one, two, three, four, five, and six epics. And each and every subtask has its own descriptions, it has its own acceptance criteria, a checklist within the subtask of stuff to complete. And I was able to achieve all of this in less than 15 minutes with just the clicks of a few buttons. So now that you see how powerful this is, let me show you how I built it. And the beauty of it is that the build is very simple. Here's how to set this AI project management agent up. We start with a chat trigger. This is fairly basic. Next up, we use a regular AI agent node from N8N. The input comes from the connected chat trigger node. And I've given it a fairly detailed prompt instructing it that it is an expert, agile development consultant with extensive experience in project breakdown and sprint planning. And when I provide you with a project, it has to analyze it and deliver a structured breakdown, uh, first with the project overview and the setup. And we also have to give it the current time because that's the only way it can effectively set due dates. Phase two is an epic by epic breakdown, and an epic is basically a chunk of work to be completed in a short span of time. So the idea is that the agent will create one epic, add it to Asana, then it's going to give us a confirmation. We ask it to create the second epic. It gives us a confirmation. We ask it to, give, to create the third epic. 
And the reason we need to do this is because if it, if it tries to create the whole thing in one go, it, there, there's not going to be enough tokens to handle such a big request at once. So in order to break it down and also for you to keep tabs on what's going on, it's better that we instruct the AI agent to take it step by step. And we're really relying on the collective experience of the AI model to kind of break down that project into the, subta the tasks and subtasks that we want. Because this requires a lot of processing power, a lot of reasoning and thinking, you want to use uh, a more advanced chat model, which is why I am using Anthropic. And for Anthropic, I'm using Claude for Sonnet. Uh, you could certainly use Opus as well, but Opus is going to burn through your tokens much, much quicker. So stick with Sonnet. Sonnet will do a very good job. If you if you like using OpenAI, use O3 or O1. You can even try Gemini 2.5 or uh, even the latest Grok model as well. So with the Anthropic chat model, we also need to give it memory for it to remember which epic it's on. So if it's completed epic one, it needs to remember that. And then in the subsequent iteration, it has to go to epic two, so on and so forth. And we're also attaching a think node and we're not changing any settings here, but the think node basically invites the AI agent to think about its output, think about the input and just verify that the output and input match. And again, since we're expecting such a large and all encompassing output, it's good to have this node in place as well. Now for actually building out the project, I'm using a service called Asana. Asana, if you're not familiar, is a project management and task management tool. It's incredible. It's incredibly powerful. You can have uh, projects within projects. You have tasks within tasks. You can have subtasks and it can keep nesting down as much as you want. You can create dependencies between tasks. Uh, it's very easy to collaborate. It's very easy for record keeping and uh, it's used by a lot of big companies and corporations and organizations to, to help manage their uh, to manage their workflows as well. And as a bonus, it integrates really nicely with N8N and it really gives the exact structure that we're looking for, which you can see here in the sample that we developed. So the free version is a little limited, but it should be good enough for you to get what you need done. And even if the free features are not enough for you, if you let's head into the pricing, you'll see that um, the starter plan is just $11 per month uh, per, per person that you add to your team. And this does not include guests. It's only, it, it only includes people you give full access to your project to. So all in all, for, for the features, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, you could certainly experiment with using ClickUp or Monday.com. Uh, Notion, I would not recommend for this kind of nesting simply because uh, the you know, Notion's database structure is not really compatible uh, with what exactly we're trying to build. Um, you can certainly do it if you do it manually, but to kind of get an AI agent to think in those terms would, would overcomplicate things. So we're giving it one, two, three, four, and five Asana tools. The first Asana tool is create a project. So we just need to connect uh, our Asana account. And in order to do that, you need to go to uh, app.asana.com slash zero slash my dash apps and go ahead and create a personal access token. So just go ahead and create your token, give it a name. And once you once you hit create token, it's going to give you uh, an API key. And you can come back into N8N and add your credential, create a new credential, use access token, paste that in here, hit save. It should verify that the connection is live and you are now connected to Asana. So the resource here is project, operation is create. Now the name is going to be this JavaScript expression here. So this expression is special to NADN where we, we're expecting that this should be passed from the AI agent into this tool. So in some cases you might have that little star button over here where uh, it says set automatically by the agent. But in case you don't have that, you can just leave this as expression and type this out. And this is the variable name that we have to pass manually. So I'm just calling it project underscore name. So the agent understands that it has to replace this with the project name. You have to select your workspace name and within the workspace, select your team as well. And that'll be after those initial discovery questions, um, where once the agent has confirmed what, what, what exactly it is that you're trying to achieve, it goes ahead and creates a project, which we can see over here. This is the project. Once the project is done, uh, the next steps for the agent are going to be to, uh, to output each epic and within each epic to create subtasks. To do that, we need to give it four tools. The first tool is get many projects. 
again, we have the same credentials. This time, the resources project, the operation is kept many. Uh, let the limit be automatically defined by the model. And we need to get the projects because when we create tasks, we have to tell the AI agent which project to create the task in. So what I saw with my testing is that sometimes when it went into Epic 1 and Epic 2, uh, instead of uh, creating the tasks in the same project, it would end up making a new project for, for every Epic. So with the get many projects uh, tool, it first checks which projects there are, it grabs that ID and then uses that project ID for creating tasks. The next tool is the create a task tool. It's the same thing as above, um, except the resource is task, the operation is create. The name, again, you cannot pass it this way, so you have to, you have to pass that variable uh, with this JavaScript expression. Uh, the assignee name or ID is again uh, another JavaScript e expression. The do on is defined automatically, the notes are defined automatically, and the project name or ID is also defined automatically by the model, which it will get from the get many projects uh, tool. We also have the create a subtask tool. The parent task ID is defined automatically by the model, which is the result of this tool over here. Let's go back here. Uh, the name, again, you have to pass the JavaScript expression. Assigning name or ID, again, same JavaScript expression here. Due on is defined automatically, and the nodes are defined automatically as well. Now, the final tool, and that's really what makes this entire workflow that much more powerful, is an AI agent nested in another AI agent. So this AI agent's job is to find a particular user from Asana. We're giving it uh, another chat model here. So instead of using a more expensive model, because this is a fairly simple task, you can get away with using 4 or mini. So you can save on some tokens. And we're also using, we're, we're also giving it a tool called get many users. So what this tool does is it pulls a list of all of the users from Asana. And I'm also giving it instructions as to which user is best suited for which kind of work. And those instructions are passed from the project manager agent up here. So the project manager agent will tell the find user agent that I need to find a user who is best suited for task X. The user, uh, the find user agent has those instructions. So it, go, it goes ahead, it pulls a list of all of the users from Asana. It determines using the AI model uh, which of those users is suited for the task that the project manager wants and that agent will return that single user ID to the project manager. Now, the very powerful part about abstracting this into a uh, into kind of its own little AI agent is that if you ask the main project manager agent to get all of those users and then figure out which user is the best uh, and then continue on with its workflow, it may overload this agent with too many tokens and too much data. So using the AI agent tool can really abstract some of those, uh, some of that thinking and, and just give the main agent exactly what it needs. So there it is, all in all, it's a very simple build. Now while I'm using a chat trigger to, uh, to start this workflow, you can certainly hook this up to Slack. Um, you can hook this up to email or any other uh, kind of input mechanism to get this agent going. And as I showed you earlier, the results are incredibly powerful. These are so many tasks and subtasks all broken down to get this project complete. Uh, and within each task and subtask, there are very detailed descriptions and instructions as to what needs to be done. And although uh, agile development is mainly used for, for building software and, and for technical implementation, the principles behind agile development can really be used to get any kind of project up and running. So whether it's renovating your home or, or planning an event or whatever that may be, you can use this project manager event uh, to help you break down your main project into its some parts and uh, and get and get things done one after another. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. And do remember to subscribe to the channel for more AI and automation content.